Who's the best looking man you've ever seen? Stan Lee. <laughs> I just want to warm up with that. <laughs> <laughs> of course, Stan Lee. The nicest man I've ever known. How did he propose, or how did, how did you guys get hitched? Well, he, geez, the first time that he saw me, he said to somebody, I've drawn that girl's face a thousand times. I'm going to marry her. And the man said to him, well, you can't. She's married already. And he said, that doesn't matter. And six weeks later, I was in Reno, divorced and married to Stan 54 years ago. You said he drew your face. Now, yes. He described uh, Gwen Stacy. You do? You know Gwen Stacy? No. Gwen Stacy is Peter Parker's first love. Oh, yes, yes, yes. As a matter of fact, he told me that, and he's, Stan has always said, I have a cartoon face. I never felt that that was kind of uh, <laughs> complimentary, but he felt, you know, little nose, big eyes. That was when I was younger, of course. Big teeth, all of that. Tell us about the ride. What was it like being uh, part of the whole thing, starting from the timely comics days? It was incredible. It was being with people who were absolutely wonderful, joyous people, the artists. Jim Mealy, Ditko, Jack Kirby. Oh God, I'm going to forget so many. Uh, Jim Mooney was there. So many, and they were all so creative. And there was no jealousy between them. It was a very interesting thing. It really was a bullpen. And of course, Stan was so young. You know, he was editor at 16. He never was supposed to oh keep that job, you know. He was hired just to fill in, and they never let him go after that. He just took over. He used to stand on a um, box, and he was tall and thin, and he would do this. He loved, he always wanted to be a, have a baton, so he would move the baton and talk to them. He was, he was wonderful with them. There was a great camaraderie, and we knew everybody. We knew when they had babies. We went to their bar mitzvahs. We went to their weddings. We, it was a small thing, of course, then it and grew, you know, it was sold and resold. When he first started to become famous, yes. what was he like? What was the reaction? What was the, your experience as He well? was exactly the same as he is now. Exactly the same, because when it really first happened was the Fantastic Four, I think. All of a sudden, fan mail came in, you know. Low man on the, on, on the totem pole with the comics. You know, America's always been embarrassed of comics. It was the most natural, wonderful pop art thing that movies are making millions of. It was, shh, doesn't belong to us. You know, we, we really aren't. The funnies. All of Europe, you know, seem to know it. The Italians love it. They're in big, glossy books. But America was sort of embarrassed of this. I don't know why. And when Stan and I would go to a party, and they would say, um, what does your husband do? And I'd say, he's a writer. What does he write? He writes, um, he writes, um, he writes comic books, and they'd go, oh, and move <laughs> quietly away. Or they'd say, oh, we don't let our children read comic books, you know, it was that. And when then, and then of course, Spider-Man became, you know, the, the pure love of everybody, a child who could have visualized everything because of the mask there. It could be black, it could be green, it could be any color. Spider-Man? Yes. Do you remember when he first came up with the idea? Yes, and I remember when he told Martin Goodman, and, and he, we discussed it at home, and Martin said, no, 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 and who wants to read about a spider? People hate spiders. So it was kind of shelved for a while. And then when Stan was almost ready to quit doing comics, he decided that that was enough. But that's when I said to him, no, do it your way, sweetheart. Do it exactly your way. Stink or swim if it doesn't go. And then that's when it started those years, but he, all those characters he created with those wonderful artists. So you're a normal married couple? A normal married couple. But I wouldn't have it any other way. He is an incredible human being. So we're all fans of his work? I think fans of his work, but fans of him too. Because people can get a tremendous ego when you are... We came out of La Dome the other night, that's the restaurant on, on Sunset Plaza, and we had taken people to dinner, and when we came out, there were about 15 young people. Young, I mean, not little boys, you know, that looked like these great dudes, you know, there, with autograph books. The people we were with, she owns a wonderful jewelry store here, and he's a big guy <laughs> in the corporate world. 
He said, my God, how did they know he was here? They can't get over it. They said, are you sure you didn't call central casting? And that happens all over, you know. We, or when we go to, to the premiere, it's, hey, Stan, Stan the man! You know, and if you could have uh, crews walking by, Stan the man! <laughs> and that's it. What about Stanley retired? No, he would never retire. You die when you retire. You literally really do. No, I think there's a glory in being wanted because I don't know if we're going to mention age here now, but it's an incredible thing that a dude his age is so much in demand. And I sometimes wonder again if it's because the young guys who read his comics are in the movie business now. That's Kevin. As I say, every time in, <laughs> in the paper, Stan will say to me, Joan, Joan, look, look, they're writing about Kevin Smith. He's my friend, you know. And they'll always say, don't you remember Kevin? I say, yes, more rats, yes, Kevin Smith. He adores Kevin Smith. He thinks Kevin Smith is a true genius. You see, did you ever watch More Rats? It's yeah. a marvelous, marvelous little movie. His sense of humor was in, is incredible. I think he's going to go very, very far. Now, there is a man, too with a wonderfully sensible ego. You yes. know, there's nothing, hey, I'm Kevin Smith, man. There's nothing I'm going to go and snort and push and jump around there. It's a concentration on his work and what he's doing. He's a marvelous young man, wonderful young man. But as I say, Stan came here years ago from New York. Peter Goober was going to do Spider-Man. And Stan came here, went to Peter Goober's house, came back to... Uh, 54th, 64th where we lived and said, you know, I've got to get out to California. See, if he'd been here, if he'd been born here, it would have been movies and it would have been the same thing because he sees things so visually and he also is a wordsman. He's there, I watch him. And again, it's, that, it's a rhythm. He sings all day. In the morning, I told you, never let him ask, never, never let him start singing an Irish song to you because it'll never end. 62 of oh Mary Cassidy, lovely little Mary Cassidy, and he's off. Don't ever do it because he'll go through the 32 verses. I wish I had him back on camera. <laughs> <laughs> lovely, sweetheart, good.